Hi and welcome back. Today's episode is about extreme gradient boosting. In this case, we're going to talk about the regression using decision trees. For that, we're going to talk about a real estate evaluation example. With different attributes, we're going to try to create a model, fit a model. We're going to talk about variable selection, and also we're going to talk about how to drop columns using pandas. At the end, we're going to talk about model's performance and how to improve our model. Let's see next about XGB with Python. Let's go. For this example, we're going to talk about real estate valuation. We have different vari variables, as mentioned here, transaction date, house age, distance to the nearest MRT station. What it means is a train station, number of convenience stores in a living circle, geographic coordinates where does this has house is located as you can see our purpose is to predict house price of of unit area for that i'm going to give you the link where i got this data set in archive ics where you can download it and you can follow the following code the idea is to use python and we're gonna use for that different libraries pandas scikit-learn and xgboost. xgboost is more than a library, is a framework for different programming language. The idea is now is to execute all this different code. I'm going to load my data, my data and I'm gonna store it in data. And I'm gonna show you what is this data about. So you can see, as I mentioned before, we have transaction date, house age, distance to nearest MRT station and so on. But as you can see, we have some problem with transaction date. It is not as usual, right? Also, we have to change this variable's name. I'm going to try to modify the name for all of these variables. And as you can see, I'm going to show you how many data we have. We have near 400 observations with eight columns. But um, the idea for this first chapter is going to be to eliminate number. It does. It doesn't give us good information or not at all. Transaction date is going to be for a second chapter. We're going to try to use feature engineering to improve all this information and to extract some insight. But th now we're going to try to eliminate data info. What is data info for? As you can see, we have transaction date as float. Then in the future, we will have to change this column to date. And the other ones are okay. Number of convenience stores integer, it's okay. Longitude, latitude, floods, perfect. Now, as you can see, different information. Uh, the first thing you, when you are creating a model in the in preposition data is to check for null values, outliers, and so on. You can see different values for all our data. Okay, as I mentioned before, I'm gonna drop some variables. Transaction date, a number. This is how we do it in Python, drop, and here's the explanation. You want the column, so you type the column's name, the axis one, that means that is columns. If I change this for zero, that means there is observation, but in this case, we want column. And now this one, or this code, is for changing columns name. I'm gonna store the new names in data columns. If you print data columns, I'm gonna do it now for showing you, take columns it gives you the current variables name however with this code i'm going to change it data columns and now as you can see i change why because these are long names with some strange things here x1 x2 it's better to type or use short variables names and as you can see that we can see the change that the change Great, we don't have the other columns we, we don't need in this moment. The variables has changed, variables name, of course. Okay, and let's see. Null variables and missing values. This is a very important step when we are processing the data for or make it making the, our data ready for the model. You can see here now here is, is na. Is na is trying to identify if there are some null values in our information. and sum is gonna sum up all the true values. If we have zero, that means that we couldn't find any null value in any of our columns. So you can see house age, 
you know, house price unit, all of them have zero missing values. So we're cool, we're okay. We don't have to mm, continue with some uh, processing of our information. Next step is to select output and input variables. Again, I'm gonna use drop. However, in this case is for just choosing from data the different columns that are independent. And for Y, we're gonna select the variable that is dependent, that is house price unit, the variable that we want to predict. We execute this part. And now the next step is important. This is super important. It's about to split our train and test information. It, that means training and testing data. We're gonna use from scikit-learn train test split function and we're gonna provide what is the dependent variables and the dependent variables. Random state is for using this information again and again and again to have the same experiment over and over. And remember something important that you can use is the test size. If you want to say, no, I really want to use my test site 50-50. 50% of my data is gonna be for training, 50% of my data is gonna be for testing. However, the default values are 0.25. That means 55% for train, 25% for testing. Now that we run this part, we, let's see what is the shape for all of our data frame. 310 observation for training, 104 for testing. And don't forget about white train and white test. This is gonna help because these are the labels or the true values of our information. In, in this case, it's not a classifier. It's gonna be choosing regressor. And our regressor is XGB. Well, I'm not gonna talk about what, how to tune the hyperparameters. This is gonna be for a future chapter but let's talk about what are the default values. Once I call my model and I feed it, Python will provide me what are those default values of my model. Let's see, let's talk about some of those default variable values and I'm gonna talk about the most used. For example, number of three meters. 100 means that we're going to improve our decision tree 100 times. Learning rate is that the way our decision trees are improved. In most cases, 0.3 is okay. That means that we have a 0.3 learning rate for improving our decision trees. Also, we can use max depth. That means how deep our decision trees are. Remember that decision trees, it has different conditions when it's asking if something is true or false, going to left or the right once our decision tree is growing up. Now that our models fit, we can see different characteristics of our model. Let's see, for example, importance. What is important? Well, this is feature important. What is more important for the model we just create? So you can see, we're gonna use matplotlib for visualizing our plot. And XGB has its own function for creating a plot. In this case, we provide the model, okay? And let's see, what is the result? I'm gonna run, rerun this part. You can see here the more more important, the most important variable is house age. That means that the price of our house depends mostly of the house age. As you can see, distance to MRT it's important to the person take or the salesperson takes into account what is the distance to the train station. The latitude, longitude is not so important compared to house age when we create this model. Now we can visualize something else is for example, the relation between house age and house price unit. Let's see if we can see uh, some pattern in linea linear pattern. So you can see there's no pattern at all. That means that even if we try to use linear regression how age maybe is not gonna be the most uh, important variable. However, when we are using XGB, it takes this variable more, or it found, it found this variable more important than the other ones. Let's see numbers of stores as the lowest in importance. 
number of stores is the lowest in importance. But when we compare it, can we find some pattern? Uh, I don't see that at all. It, do, it doesn't have a pattern, no pattern at all. So we can move forward. Let's see how to predict new values using XGB. For that, we're going to use the function predict and using the model. In this case, I have the function that my model, its name is model. So I just use model dot predict X test. And I'm going to store these predictions in predictions. Let's see the different predictions. 1 to 10. Of course, in Python, it's a start with zero, with zero. So I'm going to use from zero and 23. And we can compare it with the real values. OK, and let's see, for example, using uh, zero because it's the first observation. Remember, iLog is our index. If you don't understand what is iLog log, I'm going to give, give you or leave you one description of the videos I create for explaining the difference between iLog log and so on. And then you can see here what are the characteristics. You can see X, my XGB model found that the price per unit for this house is going to be 23.5 units with a house with age 1.1 year distance of 193 meters no, number of stores are around six and with this geogra geographic position let's see what it was the real value i log zero it was 27.3 not bad at all not bad at all taking into account this is the testing information or testing data it was not information to create the model. But let's see this more in general. This was just a particular case. But see in general, let's see in general what is this, the, the error of the model. We're going to use the function predict again, but with the data it was used for creating this model, for filling the model. That is training data. And we're going to use two different statistics for comparing the performance of our model. That those are mean square error, the MSE, and the R2 score. This one is the error for the difference predictions. And R2 is trying to explain the variance of my model. The higher, the better. In mean square error, the lower, the better. Let's see. If I execute this part, and R2 score for my training data, 0.99. That's terrific. 0.99 is almost perfect. However, is this good or bad? Let's see. Mean square error, the lower the better. If it's closer to zero, it's great. Remember, lower the better. But how I'm going to know this is the lower? With, with what? With who? Well, this is the thing with the regression. For comparing or for knowing if a model performance is okay, it's good or bad, we have to compare it with other models. In this case, we don't have other models. So how can, how can I test it? How can I compare it? Well, that's the reason we split our data, training and testing. Now we're going to compare this performance with our testing data. Let's see the R square or the coefficient of determination. As you can see, it has near 0.37 units. That means that is 37% of the variance of the model. I can explain only 30% of the variance of my model. In, on, in contrary, or as opposition, to the 99% in my training data. What it does mean? It means that my model is or has overfeeding. My model has overfeeding. That's bad my model was so good in the training data but it was terrible in my testing data that means that we have to change or modify our model in order to improve the performance in testing if not we cannot use new data to predict values of houses other way to calculate the r squared as you can see is using the function r2 score is the same as you can compare from scikit-learn and the mean square error we have here 1.7 157 units but let's see in the testing set 111 
This is a huge difference. That means that on average, the error is 111 units. Meanwhile, here is 1.57. As you can see, it's a huge difference in addition to the coefficient of determination. These two parameters are telling us that our model is overfitted. We have to do something. What to do? So what to do to improve our model? That's a very important question. What to do? The different solutions I present you or I suggest is remove all the liars from the different variables. One of them is house price unit. Maybe there is a price that is so high that is modifying too much or is affecting too much our model. And it's creating some questions in our decision trees that is too significant for the model, for the XGB model, and doesn't take into account other characteristics of our data. Also, in the next chapter, we're going to talk about dates. We're going to split our dates in year, month, and day. Maybe introducing this variable or using this variable can help us to improve our model's performance. Other thing is, or other idea is to split the train and test data or the split of the, our testing and training set. Maybe we can use 50-50 or 7-30. Other way, and it's going to be for a third chapter, other ways to optimize hyperparameters. As I mentioned, or I previously mentioned is number of estimators, a learning rate, depth of that decision trees, and so on. And also we can run some cross validation in order to choose the right model. This is all for today. And next video, we're going to discuss more about extreme gradient boosting with regression. See you next time.